Now let's look at the aspect of quality insurance in client-centered coaching. As the term coaching may embrace a huge variety of meanings to everyone who regards him or herself a coach, it is of utmost importance to define a clear coaching procedure that fits our purpose. In order to justify its means as well as to, to deliver a certain standard of quality in what we do, we shall implement a neat system of quality insurance. By quality assurance, we mean a standardized and operational procedure that will ensure the efficiency of coaching and make the coaching process verifiable. In the following, we set out to present a structural framework with individual steps for quality insurance in subsequent coaching situations. First, there is the phase of pre-documentation before you actually go into the coaching process with the client. In that phase, you gather formal personal data, you do biographical work and do an anamnestic evaluation with the client, you offer suitable help and you establish the coaching process. Second, there are a couple of things you do throughout the coaching process. And third, after the coaching is finished, you have to make a summary of subjects and aspects that came into place in the coaching and you have to assess the process. How do you do that? After the anamnesis, it is up to the coach in charge to decide about the next steps for the client, whether at this point of the process the coach is the right person to address the client's needs. It could be the case, for example, that a referral to a detox center will be most helpful for the client first, before the coach can start with the non-directive interventions. At the start of the coaching, the coach will explain the methodological approach to the client so that he or she can decide if the methodology suggested is suitable at this particular point. Perhaps it is more helpful for the client to balance the interventions pursued and to focus on communicative support first before the client is able to understand further targets. After the decision on the right strategy of support and the specific offer of assistance has been made, the client will set his or her individual targets with the help of the coach. At this stage, please do not forget to inform your coachee about what you mean by using a client-centered and non-directive approach. Tell him or her what you do, what you do not do, and why you do it. The coach will also have to take notes about the essential subjects of every coaching session. It is important to minute the behavior of the client, the coach's interventions and the aspects of the relationship structure between the coach and the coachee, as well as the agreements made during the coaching session. Of course, the particular problems discussed and the changes in relation to the problems and circumstances in the client's life have to find their way into the minutes as well. Please bear in mind that these meeting notes are strictly confidential, which means that they are only to be shared by the coach and the coachee. It is appropriate to use a standardized questionnaire after a coaching session to assure the quality of the coaching throughout the process. Therefore, it is necessary to use two types of questionnaires, one for the client and one for the coach. Important aspects to know from the client's perspectives are, first, how he or she is coping with the coach and him or herself during the coaching unit, Second, how the coachee experiences changes of attitudes, points of view and or behavior throughout the coaching. Third, how secure and confident the coachee feels on a personal level. And fourth, how the coachee feels how good he or she can calm down. Fundamental issues from the coach's point of view are the perceived interaction and changes of the client. 
for a proper analysis may be insightful to compare both perspectives in general, as well as each single item. It is also possible to rate the client's self-exploration as well in how far the coach's conversational behavior follows the defined values of the client-centered approach. Comparable to how evaluations are usually made after the process and projects, the client-centered coaching process will be followed by a clear-cut post-documentation. The following information is to be documented. The hard facts of the coaching, a summary of essential conversation subjects and aspects of the coaching process, subjective assessment of the coaching effects, and a suggestion, a plan, an outlook for following up activities. Therefore, it is recommended to use a standardized questionnaire. Let's take further steps into the quality context. Let's talk a bit about supervision. Talking about supervision in psychosocial work environments, we understand it as a fundamental method of quality insurance. A supervisor and other participants of a reflective team look at a problem described by a coach from different perspectives and therefore with an appropriate distance. In relation to client-centered coaching, supervision will support the personal development of the coach. By using client-centered supervision in the professional context, the coach will get help in understanding him or herself and his or her relation to the client much better. This way, he or she is able to develop action alternatives on the base of his or her own potential. Keeping in mind the professional context of the coaching situation, it is also clear that organizational and structural aspects may be subjects of a supervision as well. To get a clear picture of what it means to supervise a client-centered coaching, let's look at an example of a stagnant self-exploration of the client. The major task of the coach is to get to the bottom of the client's problem, together with the client, of course, and to inspire and stimulate the client's self-exploration following principles of non-directive communication. So how does this actually look like? To get an insight into the undifferentiated context, it is necessary to distinguish between external and internal content. Further, the coach has to assist in differentiating between significant and insignificant internal contact in order to get to the bottom of the client's problem and formulate stimulatory answers that can go on to reach all the grades of his or her self-exploration. The supervisor's role is to take a position in which allows him or her the metacognition of the process in a reflective supervisor coach conversation. Throughout the reflection, the supervisor will shed light on every subsequent step of the process to get to the bottom of the problem, and in parallel, he or she will look at the grades of the client's self-exploration that come along with it. Did the coach focus on the internal content that is significant to get? Did the coach get to the bottom and stimulate the client in his or her individual process of self-exploration? With this kind of process reflection, the supervisor decodes the actions of the coach and gives feedback whether the coach took an early gateway out or can find the expected stimulatory answer to encourage the client in his or her self-exploration. Mm -hmm.